Hello everyone, Koi here, hoping you had an awesome weekend. We're here for you all week, breaking down the news you need to know right here on CNN 10. Let's start with a quick look at some of the significant headlines from around the world. A powerful 6.9 magnitude earthquake rocked Taiwan on Sunday. 400 tourists were trapped after a landslide. The earthquake has also prompted tsunami warnings for Japan's southern coastline. Dozens of earthquakes have rattled this area in recent days, but this was the largest. Next up, when we produced this show, the island of Puerto Rico was bracing for tropical storm Fiona after it had charged through the Virgin Islands on Saturday. Fiona had the potential of strengthening into a hurricane before hitting the U.S. territory later on Sunday. Forecasters say that potential flooding and mudslides could be life-threatening. More than 170,000 people were already without power in Puerto Rico. And finally, the royal family saying goodbye to its matriarch after a period of mourning. A funeral is planned today for Queen Elizabeth II, honoring her 70 years of service. Hundreds of foreign leaders are in town to pay their respects. The day has been declared a public holiday in England. The Queen's funeral will end with a two-minute nationwide moment of silence. CNN royal correspondent Max Foster was in London during the royal proceedings as Englanders were mourning their queen. A steady tide of mourners pouring into the ancient Westminster Hall. It looks and feels like a pilgrimage. After hours waiting in line, a personal moment of thanks to the Queen. <laughs> King Charles III, with his son Prince William, met them outside to the delight of those waiting. They'd queued for hours and came from across the United Kingdom and the world. Security was tight. There was a phones down rule as well. A royal source told CNN it was so people can enjoy the moment with their new king. Just shake hands, enjoy it, make the most of it. The Queen's youngest son, Prince Edward, also approached the crowds, alongside his wife, the Countess of Wessex. 70 years on the throne. She's such a loved lady. That is just the right thing to do. I think that's what a lot of people in the line are, are feeling. Lots of different nations, uh, colours and everything here. It's just lovely. It's a good morale. It's a good day. Everyone's feeling really positive. It's a lovely atmosphere. The King also made time to thank emergency responders ahead of the state funeral, which police say will be their largest ever operation. And then a sombre vigil for the Queen from her grandchildren that she helped bring up. Prince William and Harry both in ceremonial uniform. Harry under special dispensation by the King, adorned with medals presented by the Queen to mark her many jubilees and also his military service. A show of unity for the nation in mourning. 10 second trivia time. Which of these happened September 17th, 1787? The Boston Tea Party, the US gaining independence, the US Constitution signed, or the US Constitution ratified? The US Constitution was signed this day, now known as Constitution Day. And Saturday marked that holiday in the U.S., so all week, we the people of CNN 10, in order to form a more perfect understanding, are going to make your 10-second trivia constitution-based. All right, next up, every year the United States wastes over 100 billion pounds of food. Aidan Riley was just a junior in college when he founded FarmLink, a company that rescues food surplus and donates it to food banks. Let's meet Aidan and hear what inspired him to start this journey with friends. The fact is every year we waste over 100 billion pounds of food in the United States and 20 billion pounds of that is at the farm level and that's such a massive number it's hard to even comprehend. Farmers end up having to dump perfectly good produce but at the same time people are hungry. Next person in line, come on down. 40 million Americans don't know where their next meal is going to come from. So my name is Aidan Riley. I'm co-founder at the FarmLink Project. We are a nonprofit that works with farms to rescue surplus produce that they're gonna otherwise throw out and get it to food banks instead. When the pandemic happened, I was a junior in college, like everybody else, I was watching the news and just seeing the next piece of terrible news come in. I remember seeing just giant trash bins outside of the dorm rooms. It looked almost apocalyptic, like an evacuation basically what it was. 
I spent those first few weeks, honestly, in a state of depression, not to use that word lightly, but I was really, really low. All the plans I'd been making and the progress were suddenly no longer viable. I think it's the other alley, yeah, it's, it's the back alley. James Knopf and I, we've been best friends since we were about 11 years old. James was like, this is one of the most significant things that might ever happen in our lives. How do you want to look back on it? And I told him, shut up, man. I just want to watch TV and like sit on, I just want to play video games. But it got us thinking. We ended up seeing an article in the New York Times about farmers having to throw out their food, like mountains of potatoes in someone's backyard or milk just being dumped into the dirt. But at the same time, food banks and the systems that were in place to feed people were suddenly getting overwhelmed. Two families in here. We would see lines of people, miles and miles long, thousands of cars lining up to get a bag or a box of groceries. But they're good. We went and talked to someone from Westside Food Bank, and they said, yeah, we are running out of food. We called up my friend Will and Ben Collier. We just said, why don't we join forces? We were over here in Los Angeles, and then Ben and Will were over in Connecticut, calling food banks, calling farms. We called a couple hundred. Eventually, we got on the phone with someone who said, I have 13,000 eggs and you guys can have them. I just don't have a way of getting them to you. Okay. And we realized that really the core issue at hand was one of time and transportation. We rented a U-Haul, drove out to where the eggs were being stored, loaded them in the back. And so that was the very first drive, was me swerving around on the 405 freeway, getting honked at with eggs bouncing around in the back, just trying to get them to the food bank so that we could, you know, feed a couple thousand people. We're going to Westside Food Bank oh, and then Food Bank again. When we were able to get that first truck, we said, let's do a second, and then let's do a third. And we're back, baby. We have moved about 70 million pounds, which is around 60 million meals. We have worked with over 100 farms in the United States and over 300 communities. We send boxes to communities around the United States at a rate of one and a half million pounds per week. All right, some friendships you just never see coming. For 10 out of 10 today, we're heading to a zoo in Chicago where an unusual friendship may be forming between two unlikely creatures. Whether they become buds, pals, kindred spirits, or friends for life, that remains to be seen. Jeannie Mose has more. Meet Otter and Ape. The otters were being introduced to their new habitat at the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago, a habitat that's home to small apes called gibbons. The gibbons live above in the treetops. The otters live below in the water. How does an otter break the ice with its neighbors? This 10-month-old pup went right up to Nubo, an eight-year-old male gibbon, began sniffing his underarm area, seemed especially intrigued by Nubo's feet. The curator of primates says this intermingling of species probably wouldn't happen in the wild where other species represent a threat. Otters are known as curious, intelligent, and gregarious animals. Otters are tactile creatures. Video of them holding hands at the Vancouver Aquarium became a hit on the internet. A couple of aquariums even put holes in their plexiglass so that otters and humans can do some interspecies hand-holding of their own. Genimos, CNN, New York. Otterly adorable. Seeing them giving some loving like that. Shout out to all of you going out of your way to make someone smile today. And special shout out to Evergreen Middle School in Hillsboro, Oregon. We hope you and everyone watching around the world have a wonderful one. I'm Coy. Thanks for watching CNN 10.